Peter Beiner joins me now to discuss the crisis in Gaza and what comes next for the Palestinians. He's the editor at large at Jewish Currents. He also writes the Beiner notebook on Substack. Peter, I wanted to start with a, an incredibly thought-provoking piece that you, you wrote today um, it, it called There is a Jewish Hope for Palestinian Liberation. It Must Survive. You wrote, quote, Israelis have just witnessed the greatest one-day loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. For Palestinians, especially in Gaza, where Israel has now ordered more than one million people People in the north to leave their homes. The days come to come are likely to bring dislocation and death on a scale that should haunt the conscience of the world. Never in my lifetime have the prospects for justice and peace looked more remote. Yet the work of moral rebuilding must begin. I, you've covered this region, this conflict for so many years. I mean, that, that second to last line there really stuck out to me. I wanted to ask you what, what you mean by moral rebuilding. What does that look like? What I mean is that Jews and Palestinians who have never been further apart um, and further and, and more enraged and, and, and less able to hear one another than we have been in the last few days need to come together about, around the simple principle about that the human life, Jewish, Palestinian, is infinitely precious and that our faiths are mutually intertwined. Um, uh, because. God has put us both in this very, very small piece of land. And that's why I'm very worried and troubled about what Israel's doing. Believe me, I understand the rage. I was in synagogue today. They handed out a piece of paper with all of the names of the, of the, of the captives so we can pray for them. We were all, we are all in shock and agony. We're all in shock and agony. But since, but ultimately, since I believe that the fate of Israeli Jews and the fate of Palestinians, including in Gaza, are intertwined, we have to ask ourselves, and the Israeli government should ask itself, in the long term, creating more massive destruction and death and trauma. Even if you can kill a lot of people in Hamas and destroy a lot of weapons, you are also going to produce so many more people who come out of that area with hate in their hearts. Is that really going to make Israeli Jews safe? It's, it's everybody, I think, wants peace, or many people call for it, and you've just mentioned it there. Obviously, Many people living in Israel, most people living in Israel, most people living um, in Gaza are, are not, uh, they're not representing Hamas. How does this happen, though? Because one of the challenges here is the, is the government, is the, the fact that Hamas has such control over the Gaza Strip. I mean, what, what is the step toward this? There have been many fits and starts in Middle, Middle East peace negotiations. The point I tried to make in that piece that you kindly mentioned is that Palis this was an act of evil. Um, but Palestinians have tried actions that are ethical. They've tried to, to resist their oppression, and they are oppressed. They're, Israel's own human rights organizations say that Israel is practicing apartheid, and Palestinians have or, tried to organize boycotts and ask for sanctions, and they've tried to appeal to the United Nations and the International Criminal Court, and the United States has played a really big role in shutting that down. My point is, if we demand that people resist ethically, in the spirit of the civil rights movement, in the spirit of the African National Congress in South Africa, and we do have the right to demand that they, that they condemn Hamas and resist ethically, we have to create pathways that people can resist ethically. And when we shut down nonviolent protest, we empower Hamas. You mentioned the United States and the United States role. The United States has been kind of involved. I worked for Secretary Kerry when we tried to do Middle East peace negotiations many times. What role should the United States be playing in this moment? What would you like to see them do more of or less of? I think that the United States, I would like America's leaders to say to Israel's leaders, we know a little bit what it's like how you feel because we felt a little bit this way after 9-11. We were blind with agony and grief and rage. And you know what? We made a lot of bad decisions out of that out of that rage. We made they made we made, we and, and so the, we as as a country that has gone through this, it's easy to start a war. It's easy to destroy things when you have a powerful military, right? What happens two or three or four years down the later when when Israel is trying to occupy Gaza after they've destroyed everything? What then? These are the questions that we didn't ask well enough before Afghanistan and Iraq that I think America's leaders should tell Israel to start thinking about now. Peter, this is a very thoughtful piece. I encourage anyone to read it if they want to know the history. Thank you so much for joining me today.